Thank you. And our next item of business this afternoon is topical questions. And we'll start with question number one from Jackie Bailey. To ask the Scottish Government what checks have been undertaken on residential tower blocks and new public buildings, including schools, in light of the recent tragic event at Grenfell Tower. Minister Kevin Stewart. Oh. Sorry, Minister Angela, Cabinet Secretary Angela Constance. Thank you, officer. The Scottish Government took immediate action following the tragic fire at Grenfell Tower to ensure the safety of residents living in tower blocks. The Minister for Housing and Local Government raised this issue with local authorities on Thursday last week and wrote to them later the same day to seek information on high-rise domestic buildings in their area, whether any remedial works, including over Claddon, had been undertaken, and if so, the material and construction techniques used. I expect to have this information uh, collated today, indeed I have some of that information, uh, but if the cladding system uh, is of the type understood to have been used at Grenfell, it is unlikely to meet current Scottish building regulation gu guidance. Furthermore, uh, Scottish Fire and Rescue Service are working with local authorities and housing associations to ensure the safety of residents in high rises. Uh, Scottish Fire and Rescue Service has already prioritised requests for home fire safety visits from residents of high-rise flats. The service has also confirmed that its quarterly visits of all high-rise domestic buildings are up to date and these visits are conducted to help familiarise local fire crews uh, with the firefighting facilities access and the layout of such buildings. New buildings are covered by the Scottish Building Regulations that include the requirement from 2005 to fit automatic fire suppression systems, otherwise known as sprinklers, to residential care facilities, enclosed shopping centres and high-risk areas within hospitals. And from 2010, they are in new schools. The Ministerial Working Group has just completed its uh, first meeting and we have undertaken, undertaken to examine what proactive preventative measures uh, we can take to ensure that our buildings are safe as possible and safe as practical. The initial focus of the working group will be on high-rise domestic buildings. Uh, the group will also consider other buildings, such as schools and hospitals, using a risk-based approach informed by emerging evidence and intelligence from the UK Government and our own local authorities. Jackie Bailey. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her response? Um, and I very much welcome the Government's announcement, both of a review, but also of the action taken so far, in particular looking at widening the scope of the review to ensure that, that schools and other public buildings are included. Um, the Minister will be aware that Western Berkshire Council hasn't done a full fire risk inspection on their high-rise blocks for seven years, whilst other local authorities do this on an annual basis. Given that there is an inconsistent approach across Scotland, what is the frequency that the Cabinet Secretary would expect local authorities to undertake these inspections, and will she issue national guidance to that effect? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you very much, uh, President Officer, and I, I appreciate the, the question uh, from uh, the member. Um, while um, fire regulations and building standards are indeed matters uh, for uh, local authorities, one of the reasons that we have established this uh, ministerial working group is that so that we can cast um, a fair and a critical eye uh, over not just uh, fire safety regulations and building standards, uh, but all uh, regulations or regulatory frameworks as uh, appropriate. And while in Scotland uh, we compare well in terms of fire safety standards and building uh, regulations, we do not for one minute uh, want to be complacent. Uh, we want to take a fresh look at all of this, be led uh, by the evidence, and of course we'll be keeping Parliament uh, duly uh, informed uh, each and every uh, step of the way. So while I'm not going to uh, rush uh, to uh, imminent conclusions, we'll certainly take on the members' uh, concerns, the very specific concerns uh, that she raised, but we are determined um, to progress the work of the Ministerial uh, Short Life Working Group with a bit of momentum uh, and a bit of pace and undertakings to keep Parliament uh, fully informed. Jackie Bailey. Um, Presiding officer, that was indeed a helpful response from the Cabinet Secretary that her mind isn't closed to some of the suggestions coming from members. I understand that the Scottish Government issued a letter to all local authorities in November 2013, recategorising certain systems as fire compliant within the building standards regulations. Now, that may have been entirely appropriate. But apparently, in this case, the council contractor in Western Bartonshire had itself halted work 
over an issue relating to the external wall insulation systems which prompted this change. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary whether she will publish all the information in relation to this to provide reassurance to my constituents and can she also tell the Chamber how often building standards regulations, or at least the technical aspects of them, are changed in this way? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, officer, I wish to um, reassure uh, the member by saying that we will indeed publish uh, information that Parliament and indeed members request. We want to be in the business of transparency uh, and indeed uh, reassurance. Uh, in terms of uh, building standard regulations, they are reviewed regularly uh, and, and my discussions with building, building standards uh, professionals within the Scottish Government, they were able to account to me uh, over um, you know, a number of years the responses that they have taken uh, in response to specific events, specific fires. So, for example, uh, in 1999, when there was a very tragic fire uh, in Irvine, uh, that led to a revisiting of uh, regulations uh, that meant that all uh, cladden uh, and high-rise dwellings had to be non-combustible. Uh, in terms of the, the very specific uh, issues around Western Bartonshire, and particularly uh, the events that were reported in the press uh, at the weekend, can I categorically say that it is absolutely wrong uh, to suggest that there was any watering down of regulations. Uh, the report in the Sunday Press uh, refers to a clarification of building regulations in 2013 in relation to classification for external wall cladding to houses where the wall is not more uh, than one metre uh, from the boundary. Uh, so this is an extremely robust standard for low-rise houses and does not apply uh, to flats of any type at any height. Uh, so there is no comparison uh, to be made between the events at Grenfell Tower and this minor change in guidance for houses uh, that was made um, in 2013. There's a, a lot of interest from members, understandably so. Um, I'm not sure I'll get them all in, but first of all, Claire Adamson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. As a convener of the Cross Party Group on Accident Prevention and Safety Awareness, I've seen a number of demonstrations of new technologies that help fire prevention as well as also um, new technologies in the area of fire suppression. So I'd like to ask the, the government how the ministerial um, working group on fire safety will ensure that the most up-to-date and emerging technologies are including in order to future-proof any recommendations as we move to more towards smart cities. Cabinet Secretary. Officer, uh, let me make two quick points to uh, Ms Adamson's uh, question. Uh, first and foremost, the, the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service uh, are in the concluding stages of commissioning joint research uh, with the uh, building research establishment based uh, in Watford and the Fire Industry Association to uh, investigate the use of new technologies uh, to prevent uh, fire fatalities uh, and injuries uh, or indeed uh, information about new technologies that would reduce uh, harm. Um, and this academic research uh, will include investigation of new technologies such as fire repressing systems and sprinkler systems. And the fire services at uh, HQ and firefighter training campus at Cambus Lang uh, is also at uh, home to the, the safety house uh, facility. Uh, and the state of the art house uh, demonstrates and showcases uh, various aspects uh, of fire safety in the home, including the use of technologies uh, such as the smoke detectors and fire suppression uh, devices. I know that the member has a long-standing issue uh, um, history of concern and has indeed campaigned on these matters and I know that she's meeting with the local government uh, and housing minister later in this week. But the other aspect of my, uh, uh, Ms. Ms Adams's uh, question, uh, presiding officer, is that the ministerial uh, working group will be using uh, all information to make informed uh, considerations and it is uh, appropriate for me to inform uh, Chamber that in terms of the follow-up request two local authorities who had intimated uh, that they have um, high-rise uh, blocks of over 18 metres, dwelling houses uh, of over 18 metres uh, high. Um, they were asked very specific questions yesterday uh, by the Housing Minister uh, on cladding and whether they had cladding that was made from aluminium uh, composite material. And I'm pleased to say that all of those 18 uh, local authorities who'd initially replied that they had uh, high-rise dwellings of over 18 metres uh, have come back uh, to say uh, that none of their cladding is made from aluminium uh, cladding material. Graham Simpson. Uh, the Local Government and Communities Committee has been doing an inquiry into 
building regulations. And we've heard that only cursory checks are done across the country on whether building work is actually done to standard. And this applies to uh, new build homes as well as public buildings, including schools. We'll come up with our own recommendations and hope to hold a parliamentary debate. But will the minister agree with me uh, that in the light of the Grenfell disaster that the regime needs to be improved and quickly? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Sign officer, I would like to uh, reiterate uh, what I said earlier in that in terms of our building standards regulatory framework, um, that it compares well uh, to elsewhere uh, in the UK, but not for a minute will this government uh, be complacent. We have a system of building standards uh, where building officers uh, have very specific duties and there's the whole process around uh, building uh, warrants. And one of the initiatives uh, by the Housing and Local Government uh, Minister in terms of introducing fees around building standards uh, is to ensure that we can invest uh, in our building standards system, ensure that it remains uh, you know, fit for purpose and that we are not for one minute uh, resting uh, on our laurels. And I do appreciate the interest uh, from the member and that the Local Government Committee uh, will indeed uh, want to pursue uh, this and other related matters uh, very thoroughly. And speaking on behalf of the Government, we welcome that interest very much. Alison Johnson. Um, thank you. I thank the um, government for their, for their action and I look forward to hearing back from the Ministerial Working Group as to what action has been taken. Residents in Edinburgh have raised concerns. Those residents who do not have sprinkler systems in older homes, of which there are many in the city and across Scotland, um, they've raised those concerns with me and I know that they are raising them directly with the fire service too. Can I ask what the government is doing to ensure that the fire service has the capacity and the resources to answer and deal with the greater number of queries they're receiving at the moment. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Signing officer, uh, Ms Johnson's question is very opposite indeed. That was uh, one of the very matters that we were discussing at the ministerial uh, working group uh, that just met you know, less than uh, an, an hour ago. And the fire and rescue service are doing currently great work, very proactive work in terms of providing reassurance uh, to people who are currently living in high-rise uh, domestic uh, dwellings. Uh, and what we're looking at very carefully is how we can support the fire and rescue service to maintain that work because I think given events in Grenfell, given that it will take some time to really understand um, the causes of tragic events uh, at Grenfell and to work through what action uh, we have and must take that we do have to ensure uh, that the, the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service are able to continue the very proactive work that they have taken. And in the last week, um, I'm pleased to advise uh, Chamber uh, that they have undertaken 200 uh, visits to people who live in high-rise flats to reassure them and to issue uh, you know, good, uh, sound uh, fire safety advice. In terms of the, the specific issue around sprinklers, um, the, the Ministerial Working Group with both Momentum and Pace will want to look um, thoroughly uh, at all fire safety matters and all technologies indicated to Ms Adamson that has a role to play in reducing that risk. We have to be in the business uh, of preventing tragedy um, and that of course it means that we will look at some of the broader issues uh, around sprinkler systems. And Bob Doris. Uh, officer, I commend the swift work taken by social housing providers to engage in form update and reassure tenants and residents. However, following discussions I've had with NG Home as a key housing provider in North Glasgow, they've agreed to go further and establish a tenant scrutiny panel on fire safety as membership drawn from those who live in the many high rises within NG Homes housing stock. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that such a scrutiny panel will help empower concerned residents, provide for a longer term and strategic local approach to fire safety? And does the Cabinet Secretary believe that other social housing providers would do well to consider similar models of tenant and resident engagement and empowerment? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, President Officer, uh, I do. Uh, there are currently 460 registered tenant organisations in Scotland. Uh, they are an established way, they're an effective way of uh, enabling landlords and tenants to work together, actually on any issue of concern to tenants, but obviously including uh, matters of safety. So I would suggest that landlords uh, and tenants uh, use them as, as a forum um, to discuss any concerns over specific uh, fire safety matters, but also to enable 
individual landlords to explain to their tenants uh, the steps, the proactive steps that they are taking to deal uh, with these concerns. I know that many local authorities uh, and uh, registered social landlords are indeed taking these proactive steps to, to reassure uh, their tenants. And it's one of the reasons uh, that the, the ministerial working group um, will consider all matters uh, of relevance and not just those matters that are strictly associated uh, with fire safety regulations or building standards. Apologies to members who I couldn't squeeze in there. Question two, James Dornan. To ask the Scottish Government what engagement it undertakes with Scotland's Muslim community and whether it will take steps to ensure the safety of mosques in the wake of the latest attack in London. Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson. I'm sure I speak for the whole chamber when I say that our thoughts are with everyone caught up in the most recent attack in London. The First Minister yesterday chaired the meeting of the Scottish Government Resilience Committee to ensure that we are closely monitoring the situation. While there is no specific intelligence of a threat in Scotland, Police Scotland have actively reviewed all safety and security plans at Scotland's mosques. An element of this includes ensuring our armed policing and specialist resources are appropriately deployed. The Scottish Government has strong, well-established relationships with our Muslim communities and we have been in regular contact to provide reassurance and understand where there may be any tensions. We will not tolerate any attempt to target any community by any misguided individual or group. Police Scotland continue to closely monitor hate crime and we encourage anyone who has been a victim of or witness to hate crime to contact the police and to report the incident. James Dornan. Thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. During this holy month of Ramadan, Muslim families and communities across Scotland are meeting late in the evenings to break their fast and to join in worship. Has consideration been given to special protections around mosques around these times to ensure our friends in Scotland's Muslim community feel safe and secure as they express their faith and go about their lives? Cabinet Secretary. General Officer, as I mentioned, uh, Police Scotland have now reviewed uh, security and policing arrangements around all of Scotland's mosques and are applying resources as they see as being proportionate and appropriate given the nature of the threat which has uh, been experienced following the incident in London. What I can assure the member of, that also gives consideration to the key times uh, during the course of the day when there are larger numbers of people at Scotland's mosques. And that includes at the time of uh, breaking at fast and in joining in prayer in the evening. Police Scotland will continue to keep that under review. They continue to engage uh, with mosques directly to ensure that they are content with the additional security measures which have been put in place and that will continue to be monitored in the weeks and days ahead. And James Doran. Uh, and again, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Last Thursday, I broke the fast when I, I chaired a constructive meeting in Kithkarol Parish Church in my constituency with Sunni and Shia Muslims as well as representatives of Christian denominations. It illustrated perfectly that people of a diversity of faiths across our nation share that amb ambition to build stronger communities and live peacefully together. Can the Cabinet Secretary tell me what is the Scottish Government doing in schools and more generally throughout Scotland to foster tolerance and respect and to end prejudice, discrimination and hate? Cabinet Secretary. John Oster, I believe the event that uh, Mr Dornan uh, hosted uh, just last week uh, demonstrates that uh, what unites us is greater than what uh, divides us as a society. Uh, as a government, uh, we recognise the importance of having strong, resilient, uh, supportive communities. Uh, last week, the Cabinet Secretary for uh, Communities, Social Security and Equalities uh, made a statement in this Parliament setting out our ambitious uh, plan in order to make sure we take action to effectively tackle hate crime and prejudice within Scottish society and importantly, uh, to create greater community cohesion. This includes uh, steps to progress relationships and behaviours, uh, working in schools, uh, and also in establishing a refreshed anti-bullying uh, guidance programme. This is all about making sure that we address attitudes at an early stage in schools and in our education system have a key part to play in helping to support this work. And that's work which we as a government will continue to take forward with our partners within local authorities in the month, months ahead. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary and members? That concludes topical questions.